I often get asked, what are my favorite antennas for parks on the air operating? Well, you can see I have quite a collection here, and I'll tell you, my two favorite antennas are in this pile. Hi, I'm Mark, AA3K, and welcome to another episode of AA3K On The Go. Those of us that like to take our HF ham radios out into the field and operate portable for things like parks on the air, summits on the air, or just getting out into the outdoors and operating, uh, especially love our antennas. Face it, they are the things that connect our radio waves to the ether, sending them off and pulling them back in. Uh, I've been actually operating portable for over 20 years now, prim initially, primarily uh, when just camping, taking an ICOM 706 with me. But as uh, time has marched on and Parks on the Air has become a big part of my outdoor operating, uh, with over 130 park activations underneath my belt, I've developed two favorite antennas that I use for almost all of my Parks on the Air activations. My first favorite antenna is an NFED half wave. This particular one, I've used about 65 feet of wire, which makes the lowest operating frequency in the 40 meter band. And the antenna works all, on all the harmonically related higher frequencies. So 20 meters, 15 meters, which is the third harmonic of 40 meters, and 10 meters. Instant band switching between those four bands, usually no additional tuning from an antenna matching unit needed, and you're up and running. The setup is usually pretty easy. I either throw a rope over a tree branch and haul up the free end of the antenna or I use my jack kite 30 foot mast and attach the antenna to the end of the mast and lean it up into a tree branch. Operation or results with this antenna have been very good. I've had contacts all across the United States uh, into Europe, South America, nothing in Asia though but that's really just time of day and say possibly only running 100 watts in the field. Uh, downsize to the antenna, it is 65 feet long at 40 meters. If you want to uh, build this antenna for 80 meters, you need about a 130, 135 feet of wire, or you can go shorter, down to 20 meters, and only need about 32 feet of wire. Uh, I have tried with the uh, radio's antenna matching unit, antenna tuning unit, to get this to operate on 80 meters, or the walk bands, and I've been sporadically successful. I don't know whether it's due to the particular ground conductivity at the time or the amount of coax I used uh, connecting the antenna, but uh, I'll have to run some more experiments on that. Uh, I almost always use this antenna with 50 feet of coax. Uh, all antennas are made up of two parts, the actual radiating element and a counterpoise. Uh, the outside of the shield on a coax cable will become the uh, counterpoise for this antenna so that probably helps in the performance and I almost always use a RF choke to can do the final connection between the coax and the radio just to make sure I'm not getting any RF back into the radio uh, or say into my camper I did use one particular antenna and I was getting a lot of RF on the coax back in and it just ripped the campers radio to pieces to the point that the microprocessor was just completely locked up and the radio was stuck on blaring noise. I had to pull the fuse <laughs> to get that to work. I quickly threw a choke in line with the coax feeding and all was well again. My second favorite antenna is a ground mounted, center loaded, vertical antenna. Kind of similar to a screwdriver antenna in style. Uh, well over 10 years ago, I found this antenna from a vendor at Dayton for about $75. And as I was starting to get out and operate portable with my 706 on camping trips, I figured that this would be a very good addition to my kit. Uh, this is very similar to a super antenna, uh, but at a far cheaper cost. I have no idea if they're still available anywhere. And you can check eBay, AliExpress, Temu to see if something like this is available. The antenna consists of a tripod base, the actual coil to adjust it, similar in concept to the screwdriver antenna, an add-on coil to bring operation down to 80 meters, 
Two risers that when screwed together will lift the coil about three feet off the ground. Uh, three and a half foot telescoping whip. Uh, and a flat plate along with a C-clamp in case I want to like mount this to a table or something like that. Theoretically, I can even drill a hole through there and put a spike in here if I wanted to punch it into the ground. For ease of use on the antenna, I added a 90 degree PL259 to make hooking up the coax a little bit easier. And a tape measure where I measure from the bottom of the antenna to the bottom of the sliding tube where I have the amount of coil to expose for the various bands that I operate with this antenna. The antenna came with about 15 feet of radials. Uh, each, it's uh, four runs of three conductors of ribbon cable. Uh, and I found the operation a little bit squirrely, particularly on 40 meters. Now, I could probably strip all of these ribbon cables apart, but then it'll be a very unwieldy mess to roll up and carry. What I did suddenly think of is get a spool of speaker wire and I stripped off two 33 foot lengths and separated each of those things. So I have four 33 foot radials and I hooked these up to the antenna. Once I did that, the operation of this antenna was stupendous. I've had contacts again, all over North America and in Europe and in, into South America and the Peace de la Resistance, contact with Antarctica while doing a pox on the air activation. I'm going to do a quick demonstration of setting up this antenna so you can see how, how it goes together and make your decision if you want to find one. Finally, some really nice weather to film outside instead of in the studio sunroom. So here's a demonstration on how I set up this center loaded vertical. First step is to grab the ground legs, screw them in to the base here. and take the two vertical risers. They screw together. And all of the threads on this antenna are metric. I use this with both a, the telescopic whip that came with this, as well as a 102 inch CB whip, which uh, had a friend of mine weld together a 10 millimeter bolt and a 3 8 by 24 or so standard antenna thread uh, nut and I screw the bolt into the top of the uh, tuning coil then I screw the antenna into that adapter the overall performance with the CB whip is definitely uh, better than with this telescoping whip but the telescoping whip has the advantage it the telescoping whip has the advantage of packing down into the case whereas the 102 inch whip well i can only carry that a short distance i then attach the ground radials to the spade lug on the base of the antenna here and i spread them out usually in just a plus pattern sometimes if my space is tight i'll just spread them out into a straight line that's it, spread out the radials, adjust this with my listed references to the appropriate length, check the SWR on the radio, and I'm ready to operate. Can be set up with this antenna roughly 10 minutes tops. So there we have it, my two favorite antennas for portable operations, including parks on the air. What are your favorite antennas for portable operation? Why don't you put it in the comments below and we can continue the, the discussion of this. What other antennas do I use? Well, for my QRP portable operations, I typically use uh, my KM4 ACK and fed half wave or the ground mounted vertical. With the ultra compact HF Go kit I put together, I've been using the K6 ARA and fed half wave. Uh, both as and fed half waves, just with lower power, work just as well as my full size one. When I first started operating portable, I would take this behemoth an Alpha Delta DXCC uh, fan dipole, good for 10 through 80 meters. It's uh, made with solid core wire, 
It's pretty uh, heavy to set up and you have to get those fan dipole ends around other branches. It was a lot of work to set up. I'm very happy that I did discover N-Fed half waves. Uh, when I first started doing parks on the air, uh, I purchased a Ultimax DX Stream 33 foot. Uh, lengthwise, this works out very well for setting up in the field. It does need a tuner to operate all bands, and I have found operation on 40 meters to be uh, squirrely. Sometimes the automatic tuner deciding it needed to run a new tuning cycle in the middle of a QSO. And finally, I built a 20, 40 meter link dipole. I have used this during the Pennsylvania QSO party, and uh, this worked very well, and I found with an antenna tuner, I could get this to load up on 80 meters, which was particularly important, that particular QSO party that I used it during. Uh, I was actually at Black Machine State Park in Pennsylvania. It, uh, the entire contest moved up to 80 meters very early in the contest. That is how bad propagation was. Hey, remember I'm trying to help you make the outdoors your ham shack. This is Mark, AA3K73, and I'll catch you in the next video.